I am going into the woods to use some of my woodland resources on our homestead. A lot of the time, I at least I think, a lot of the time when you buy a homestead, people don't think about the resources that you can get from the woods. The woods have so much to offer. I didn't even really think about it as much when I bought my homestead with my family. Um, we have about 20 acres. Um, most of that is woods. Um, we have about six acres or so of pasture, and then the rest are steep woods. We have some pathways and trails through the woods, but um, we still got a lot of work to kind of clear those trails. I am looking for three resources today. First, I'm looking for mushroom logs. In a second, I'm going to show you my logs I made last spring. I actually got my first oyster mushrooms yesterday and we had them um, with some sausage and it was delicious um, last spring I made uh, I'm looking at them right now maybe 15 mushroom logs for shiitake and for oysters now now oysters are easy to grow on tulip poplar that's what I have a lot of I have tons and tons of tulip poplar that's probably the number one tree in my forest. We also have cherry um, and a little bit of oak and a little bit of maple. And we have some pine mixed in there, some sassafras. But most of our trees, I'd say like 60% of our trees are tulip poplar. Luckily, there's one mushroom that grows great on that. Those are oysters. Um, but oaks are hard to find where I live. I live at about 3,000 feet in North Carolina. The leaves are falling. So this is what I'm doing. I can identify an oak tree all day by its leaves, but when the leaves are gone, it's a little bit harder to identify an oak tree, at least for me. Same thing with maples. They kind of start looking a little similar. Even cherry can kind of look the, the uh, same. Cherry is pretty distinctive, but sometimes a cherry tree, an oak tree, and a maple tree, if the bark is just right, can kind of look like the same tree. So oak is a great tree for mushroom logs. So I'm gonna go ahead and tag those, and um, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to hopefully make 50 to 100 mushroom logs. It takes about a year to get your mushrooms, so it is a long-term investment. I'm also looking for maple trees because I'm thinking about trying to make my own maple syrup this um, spring and I want to see if I can find a nice little sugar bush I think that's what people call them up north I know people don't really make uh, maple syrup uh, in the south but I'm gonna give it a try I'm gonna see what I can do and the third resource I'm looking for today are dead trees that I can use for fence posts. So let's go ahead and get into the woods and see what we can find. Here's a great example of a tulip poplar. Pretty easy to recognize. Um, I don't need to tag any of these. Over here is a good example of a cherry tree. Though at least in my opinion, the bark of a cherry tree can uh, have more variation in it but this actually would be a good tree for me to use for shiitakes um, this is not the best tree to use for shiitakes the best is oak but uh, it's nice to know that this tree is really close to my house and really close to my mushroom logs about uh, 50 feet from where I'm going to be having my mushroom logs so I'm going to probably harvest this tree as uh, the second best tree for shiitake. Here's a smaller oak tree, but this is the first one I found that's even worth taping up. 
Um, it's small, but I can still use this for some mushroom logs. I could probably get uh, four okay sized uh, logs out of this. Um, and I make my logs about uh, four feet long or so. So I'm gonna tape this up. And again, in a few weeks when the leaves are officially gone, I am going to come back harvest. The best thing with mushroom logs is to um, go ahead and put your, your spawn in as quickly as you can at your mushroom spawn so that they will colonize the log instead of a uh, wild mushroom taking over the log. So the best thing to do is as soon as you cut them within a day or two or even that same day, to go ahead and put your um, your plugs in for your mushroom. And uh, this is a start. And again, I'm looking for about 100 mushroom logs, 50 to 100, mainly shiitake probably. So if I can get three out of this, that's a small dent in what I'm hoping to do this year. I found two nice uh, dead trees. These look like they are locust, is what I think they are. They've been dead for a while. We have a decent amount of locusts here as well. Probably our number four tree on the property. Um, so I'm gonna tag these off so that they'll be easy for me to find in a couple weeks. I can tell that they're dead from a distance, but it's just nice to tag them off. Um, I'm going to use these hopefully for fence posts. I'm trying to fence off or uh, raise beds. Uh, it's kind of like a tiered garden beside the house. Um, the goats are able to get there pretty easily if we let them out into the yard. And there's almost no point in um, growing anything there if the goats can get to it. So I'm gonna tag these off. I can probably get um, probably three fence posts each from these two trees and I'm looking to get about 15 fence posts. So that's a good start for harvesting fence posts on the property. It's November second third fourth something like that and i did not expect to see a little box turtle um very cute one though um it looks like she has a little crack so i'm not really going to disturb her much i'm going to put her back she's by her little creek um i bet she's hibernating in these leaves or about to uh so i'm not going to bother her too much but I always like seeing wildlife on the property, especially when I don't expect it. You don't expect to see a reptile hanging out in November in North Carolina. So let's go ahead and uh, just put her back exactly where she was. There was a reason that I picked right now to look for oak trees and maples. Uh, the reality is I've been really busy and I haven't been able to do it until just now. But the second reason is half of the tree species, at least half of them, especially tulip poplar, which is our major tree here, they've already dropped their leaves. So most of the trees I'm looking at are either uh, maple, oak, um, a little bit of cherry, and then I think the last one is um, ash, maybe. So most of our trees have dropped their leaves, which makes it easier. I just have to go towards the foliage. Foliage? Foliage. Foliage? Foliage. 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 I have to go through the fol or go towards the foliage. Foliage. Foliage? I'm gonna edit that out. I just have to go towards the leaves and uh, hopefully it will be the tree that I'm looking for.
This is a giant tulip poplar on our property. I always like coming to visit her. Um, you can tell that the bark really changes as they get this big. It would take about two and a half of my arms to go around this tree, so uh, it's a pretty big tree. This here, right behind me, is a great oak tree for mushroom logs. I can probably get um, at least 10 logs out of this one tree, so it's a nice size where it's not gonna be too big to carry. I still gotta go uh, all the way down to the barn if you can maybe see it through the trees. So I'm trying to get trees that are going to be easy for me to get. Um, we do have a tractor if I need to transport some stuff, but I still need to get it from the woods to the pasture at the very least. But this is a great find for this oak tree. Um, towards the top, it'll be easier to carry. They're not gigantic, maybe the size of a leg or something. Uh, but this is a great find. Like I said, I don't have a lot of oak trees. This is the American Holly, pretty easy tree to identify. We don't have too many of these, but uh, they are sprinkled throughout the woods. Um, a cool evergreen. Um, most people know them for Christmas time, for decorations. I just read recently you can make a tea-like beverage out of American Holly. I haven't tried it, I've had sassafras tea, but um, I'm gonna look up American Holly tea and. Uh, see what it is because I really don't know I think I found the start of my sugar bush I have two nice maples here. I think a third and a fourth one a little higher up on the hill. Um, again, I'm on the edge of our pasture. We don't have a lot of maples, but these are good sized maples. As you can tell, our property was logged maybe 50, 60 years ago, but um, they didn't take everything. And we actually have some big trees on the property. I might show you our really big oaks in a minute but uh i'm gonna mark these i know exactly where they're at but uh i'm just gonna mark them for good measure i'm gonna tie a double loop around them that's going to tell me the difference that hey these are the maples dummy not the oaks so um hopefully early next spring i'm gonna try my hand at making some maple syrup for the family i know it's a tedious process is what i've heard and read and watched videos about uh but hey if I can't have fun on the homestead, what's the point, right? I'm going to do it for fun and uh, see if I like it or not. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a really cool polypore mushroom up top. Um, some people like to use them for artwork. It's an Appalachian, uh, I guess, tradition around here. Uh, I'm going to zoom in, see if you can see it. There it is. We have this giant white oak, but there's probably almost a dozen of them. These are kind of right on our property line. And I think what probably happened is that it was right on the property line and neither neighbor, I guess, bothered to do anything with them. And they also make great shade trees. And there used to be cattle on this property and the next property over. And uh, I can just imagine cows hanging out here in the summertime and these big trees just giving them some shade. 
So all along this ridge line are these nice white oaks. I know they're white oaks from the leaf. Um, I haven't found any that I can use for mushroom logs. These are too big. Uh, but if you've ever wondered how to tell the difference between a white oak and a red oak, white oaks are rounded leaves like a cloud, white cloud, white oak. Red oaks, which I don't have any around, um, are sharp like fire. Red oak, red fire. That's how I remember it. starting to, to get a little bit deeper in the woods and I just wanted to point out one of my favorite Appalachian um, plants and that's rhododendron. When you see rhododendron you know you're in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Um, it is a beautiful shrub, small tree and um, lots of people would love to have a rhododendron and uh, we have uh, a whole grove of wild rhododendron is pretty beautiful. Some quick advice if you're looking for a homestead, if you can fall in love with the homestead that you're looking at in the fall or winter when there's no leaves, then you're probably going to love it in the summer. Um, this is a great time of year to be in the woods, nice and quiet. But uh, it's definitely a different experience than the bounty of the spring and summertime. Daddy, look up, buddy. You're a good dog. You're a good dog, bud. Dog cam. What does the dog see? Great day to be in the woods with, uh, a trusted companion, Teddy the Corgi. Hey, bud. I discovered this old log on the property. This deadfall here but I think it was chicken of the woods covered this tree so uh, I'm definitely late um, it's probably been dead for a while but I'm gonna come back here next year in early fall and see if this tree is covered in chicken of the woods because I'm telling you I mean there would be pounds of it so uh, you never know what you'll find when you're exploring your own property I was able to find, I think, five or six good-sized maple trees, all kind of close um, to each other, which is nice. Not too far from the end of our pasture. I think I've marked off about 15 oak trees. That should get me started on my uh, mushroom logs this year. Plenty of dead trees. A uh, good, healthy forest should actually have um, some dead trees in it. Um, so I have plenty of future fence posts and firewood. I have not been great at harvesting firewood lately, but uh, hopefully I'll get to it. It's not a necessity. We do have uh, a furnace and things like that, but uh, it does help to heat with our firewood in the winter. 
Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video of uh, exploring the woodland resources on my homestead. If you have woods, take another look at them. You may have more resources out there than you actually think. So until next time, keep on homesteading.